Colleagues, thank you so much for your comments um, thus far. Um, they've really helped to solidify how I'm going to be voting. And I, I do want to say a few things about some of the comments that were said in terms of the policing right now. Um, police that are downtown right now, most of them are there on overtime. And the Tenderloin Station is the highest staff station in this city. <laughs> they get the most resources of any station to deal with the problems uh, and the issues that are there. And also, I just want to clarify, too, that the POA did ask for a hiring bonus during negotiations, and the city denied it. So uh, I just wanted to get that out um, and be clear on a few facts. And, you know, to be honest, the contempt and bitterness around this vote uh, is beyond distressing to me. I find it extremely unproductive and hurtful to a lot of people who are just trying to make a difference and tackle our most pressing problems and the way this has unfolded and the things that have been said to, to one another um, have been to me problematic. I consider you know, this San Francisco to be the city of St. Francis. I say it all the time in these chambers. I hold myself um, to the goal to always try to be a channel of peace. And that means when there's hatred, bringing love, when there's discord, bringing harmony, when there's error, bringing truth, and when there's despair, bringing hope may sound corny to some, but it hasn't let me down yet, and I am approaching today's vote with that in mind. I have had to put all the noise aside with this, because there's a lot, and ask myself what I really think is the right thing to do here, and what I think will get us to what the goal was in the first place, more police officers, which is the entire reason this policy was put forth in the first place. I started down this path with Supervisor Dorsey because I absolutely agree with him that we don't have enough police officers to address the concerns that our constituents are voicing to us on a daily basis. And I agree with Supervisor Walton when he says we haven't done enough to make it interesting enough or want for people to want to even become police officers. And that's where we also um, need to be focusing our efforts. Public safety, as I have said over and over again here, is a baseline obligation of what a well-functioning city government should do, and I do believe it's an absolute crisis that we are 600 police officers short of what's needed to meet the demand for service. That's based on a formula that we have agreed to and that has been approved and that Chief Scott has routinely come to this board and has um, informed us of. Like I said, public safety is foundational. Our ability to recover from the pandemic is continuing uh, to be hampered by the police officer shortage in a myriad of ways. It's something that I see in my district every day and I see throughout the city. But I do believe we need a fiscally responsible plan to get there. And I will support any measure that increases police staffing without forcing layoffs of other essential workers to pay for it, including what many people have mentioned today, 911 dispatchers, nurses, and other public safety workers. I've approached this decision with the same seriousness and focus I have with previous public safety matters during my almost now six year tenure in this seat. And I'm really become a pro at taking a lot of serious heat on my past decisions, no matter where it's coming from, so I'm used to it. But I will always do what I think is right in a situation. I've consistently supported the police and championed public safety policies. That's why I'm supporting the mayor's Safer San Francisco proposal. And despite the recent political fervor surrounding this issue, I want to emphasize that I will always endorse proposals aimed at enhancing public safety. I have stated too, I am not inclined, I've stated this on some housing issues, on other different policies, I'm not inclined to let perfect be the enemy of the good. My position on this matter is consistent with my past actions, such as my refusal to vote for the 2020 city budget due to what I thought at the time was insufficient funding for the police and inadequate support for struggling small businesses in the middle of the pandemic. My voting history on police commission appointees reflects my commitment to scrutinizing choices for the betterment of public safety. And again, I've taken other serious votes on police issues here at the board. Um, that I stand by and, like I said, have brought me a lot of flack. But recent incidents in District 2, including an attack on a muni driver, shootings, retail theft, and my firsthand experiences like car break-ins and home burglary, underscore the urgency to address the safety concerns in our community. One of our most basic functions is in to, in, to ensure resident safety and peace of mind. It is evident to me, evident to me that we have fallen short in this regard and I am determined to see tangible improvements. 
My priority is to make decisions that yield what I think are positive outcomes. I had concerns with this measure as first proposed due to the set-aside allocations, and I knew it was going to be a problem getting through this board. In San Francisco alone, we have 22 baseline set-asides already. That exceeds the total in every other city and county in the state combined. In fact, local governments in the rest of California have a total of 10 similar funding requirements. For comparison to other cities, Los Angeles has adopted two requirements, San Diego has one, and San Jose has none, and that's based on um, a controller's report. Concerns with set-asides are not new to anyone who has been paying attention to San Francisco politics. And in 2008, the voters told us that they had had enough of set-asides. Prop S set a policy back then, which passed by the voters, albeit non-binding, just like some of the other policy statements we're putting on um, the ballot in March, that set asides, this is what Prop, Proposition S said in 2008, that set asides would be voted on only if paired with an adequate new source of funds so that the implementation of the set aside will not cause a net decrease in general fund revenues. Besides, because set-asides limit discretionary spending, it further constricts our spending in times of economic downturns, which we all know are on the horizon. Total funding set-asides for this year's budget amount to $2.1 billion out of a total of $4.5 billion in general fund aggregate discretionary revenue, leaving us with $2.4 billion in discretionary revenue. That is not a lot out of a 14 plus billion dollar um, budget in San Francisco. So my point is that it's hard when you're talking about set-asides. They're very hard to legislate, especially here at the board. And it is not shocking that other public safety personnel like 911 dispatchers who are also working double shifts get a little nervous and feel a little left out um, during this process. So the question naturally becomes, how do we pay for this? It certainly does not have to be with a new and future tax measure. The language states it could be paid for by a measure that would amend an existing general or special tax to dedicate and or increase tax revenue to support police staffing and recruitment at the new minimum levels. So we don't have to pass a new tax for this to be meaningful. I do want to thank Matt, Supervisor Dorsey, for even bringing us to this point. We do have people that probably haven't agreed to before, or at least publicly, that we do need more officers, that the minimum staffing number will actually um, be in the charter with meaning behind it, not just a number that someone came up with. And if the voters agree, we will know we will have to find a way to pay for it. And my goal would be to redirect dollars from existing tax, which I think is very doable. I think that is moving the needle in the right direction. I know it's not exactly how it was envisioned to begin with, and I know this has been mentioned as a poison pill, but Supervisor Dorsey, through the president, I think you've actually planted a seed and have pushed this board to commit to doing more on this issue. The proposed measure provides voters with a chance to express, we're not voting on anything other than giving the voters to tell us what they think. That's what we're doing. We're putting something on the ballot for the voters to tell us how they think. A chance to express whether they desire more police presence. If that is the case, the real work will commence to establish a dedicated and meaningful funding stream for our police department. And I repeat, it doesn't have to be a new tax. We are not sending a tax measure to the voters today. I guarantee you, I will be working on a way to make certain we have real funding streams in place and will continue to vote for more police officers like I have consistently done on this board. And that includes figuring out ways, again, as Supervisor Walton said, to figure out how to get more police officers to want to come here and to even be police officers in the first place. We can continue to vote here at the board on recruitment, retention, overtime, and other ways to bring more officers, regardless of what's going on here, regardless of what goes to the voters. We still have jobs to do here, and we can still focus on those issues and try to bring solutions here and now. Uh, today, I will uh, be voting in the affirmative to give voters a chance to let us know how they, too, feel on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Stephanie. Supervisor Melgar. Uh, 